Proverbs series. If you're if you've looked at it on the, the website or, or on YouTube, I've seen it was labeled a, I think it's a wisdom for living. Yeah. It's Proverbs wisdom. I, I like that. Because that is that is so needed today. And and whatever day and time man has lived, it's always been needed. But and most certainly we all can agree that today we need wisdom for living. Amen. And to make the decisions, I mean, sometimes it, you ever just had an, op, you know, an opportunity and you to make a good decision and you, 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 you didn't make the right decision, you said, man, I blew it. Yep. We do it. We're human. You know, and... It can be very simple things, things that really matter. I'm talking about things that mold and make and develop people. If we make the wrong decision, because, you know, our job as the body of Christ is to reach people that don't know Christ and to help each other, to strengthen one another. To, to encourage our brothers and sisters, whether they're here in this body or not. But that's, that's our position, that's our job, that's our duty, that's our calling. And as Pastor uh, talked to us and instructed us last Sunday, uh, walk worthy, to walk worthy. That's, that's important and we need God's wisdom at work and to change us because I can raise a hand and say I don't know it all. And I, I, I don't know anything, basically. Yeah. But I know Him. Mm -hmm. And in whatever situation, He is always enough. He is always enough. Let's look at Proverbs 14. I, I looked through the rest of 13 and I, I really wanted to get on into 14. And you know, I, I read through this several times prayerfully and there's a couple of points that that really stuck out to me and I really thought I really thought that hey I know how to do this but I found out something I don't know I don't know how to do this I don't know how so I'm not going to try I'm not going to try to present to you this out of my ability because I don't have it I mean this this literally blew me away at some things that were I was reading and, and, and the Lord was sharing. And I said, Lord, you, you're, going to have, you're going to have to do this because I can't. So I, what I'm trying to say is without wasting my time is, is that I thought that I could take this and just, you know, thus saith the Lord, this is what, you know, I'm going to teach this. But I'm going to ask him to teach it this morning. Let him, let him teach. Let him minister. And I just pray that I speak what he has been speaking. I, and I believe through preparation and just presenting myself to him that I will speak in the direction. So we're not going to cover a lot of this chapter, but that's okay. But we're going to cover what I feel that the Lord showed me. Beginning in verse 1, the scripture reads... Every wise woman buildeth her house, but the foolish plucketh it down with her hands. The title, if you want to title this, or if you want to label it, or if you want to write it in your notes, is building blocks. There's building blocks for the Christian. And that we need to understand that we have an opportunity to use these building blocks in our life. And to understand that this scripture here where it says every wise woman buildeth her house. You know, that's a powerful statement, but it's not just limited here to gender. I want to understand that first of all now. Women are very important. <laughs> yeah, somebody should have said amen. <laughs> I mean, come on. Well, you wouldn't be here without us. Uh, very important. That's, I mean, that's, that's an understatement of the year, I guess. 
very important. And it's been said in, in a lot of different varied ways how that behind every good man there is a a good woman. A better woman. That's that's true. That's true. And we should give honor to where honor is due. And it's important for a woman. The scriptures has a lot to say about a, a woman who fears the Lord. That she shall be praised. That's that's pretty powerful coming from God. Yes, it is. That's powerful. Yes, it is. Because there's so much damage that can be done if not if it's not done God's way. So, but I want to look at this this morning with that in mind. But as with every Christian, well, then every child of God, male or female, that God is no respecter of persons. The scripture even says there is neither male or female, right. Jew nor Greek. There's neither in his sight when it comes to our, our service, our devotion, our citizenship in his kingdom. There is neither. But look at what the Holy Spirit put in Scripture. Every wise woman buildeth her house, but the foolish plucketh it down with her hands. Every Christian, every child of God has an opportunity to build a house. Everybody has this opportunity. It has to be done with correct doctrine. It has to be done with doctrine that is of God, of the Holy Spirit, that is anchored in the sacrifice of Jesus and none other. It cannot be in the sacrifice of Jesus and this or this, with this, added to this. It has to be in the correct order that God gave. And I've, I've been doing some study on and off in Genesis chapter 21. He, even beginning, I ain't, I ain't just focused on that, but even beginning back to the first of this year, the Holy Spirit spoke to me about Genesis chapter 21. That in that chapter, how that God took and revealed unto Abraham the, the doctrine, if you will, of substitution, the substitutionary doctrine, teaching, how that when he commanded to take Isaac, your son, your only son, and go into the mount that I will show you and offer him unto me a burnt sacrifice. You know, totally God is totally against human sacrifice, totally. But in the mind of God, he was wanting to teach Abraham to trust him with what he was about to teach him. And this was introduced to humanity through Abraham and him going to that mount and the faith that Abraham exactly displayed and that he used it indeed was accounted unto him for righteous he chose to believe God even whenever God promised him a son but now he is obeying God to go into this mountain and I'm not going to go to chapter 21 for save time today but I had to include part of this because this is just some things I've been looking at and the Holy Spirit mentioned it to me again this morning that in that chapter that whenever he told the two young men that was with he and Isaac that y'all wait here, the lad and I are going to the mountain. We're going to the mountain to worship. And we'll be back. It was forever settled in his heart and mind that he even received Isaac as one from the dead. That if that's what it took, God meant what he said and he was going to do it. 
and God's promises will not fail. We need to grasp hold of that with our faith. Amen. The building blocks that we have as a Christian, the growth that we have to, uh, to take advantage of that is there for the purpose of every single child of God is, it has to be anchored. It has to be totally 100% with the same viewpoint that Abraham had when he and Isaac went from the presence of those two young men that were with him up into that mountain. They had already traveled for three days. What a, what a journey that must have been in Abraham's mind. But when he got to the mountain and it was now or never, it was the time to make the stand. It was time to, to make the decision and declare it openly. Our lives, church, our lives, and, I, and I, this has been said, I don't want this to just sound like just something that's repetitive. I want you to grab hold of this this morning. Our lives are to be lives of worship. Amen. To be lives of worship. To compare here that in this one verse of scripture, this house that's to be built. Proverbs, earlier in our study in Proverbs, it seemed, I forget the chapter, but it's Seven, seven or eight in there, it says that wisdom has built her house. She has hewn out her seven pillars. This, 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 is a, this is ordained of God for us to participate and be a part of the building process that God wants to build in you and in me. We have to give ourselves to it. We have to yield ourselves to be built up for the things that God wants to do and change in our lives. Change, I see it. Wow, we hate that word, change. But if we love God and we love instruction, we will welcome it, we will embrace it. We will cherish the chain from which we are connected to him with. We will learn to embrace the chain, if you will, as being a true servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're free in him, but we are free to be his servant and to willfully yoke up, to willfully be chained to be enslaved, but it is a life that is better than none other that we could ever imagine. Yes. So I've, I've talked to people about that before and they didn't know how to receive that because they, they don't know, they don't understand the, the part about dying. That's right. Dying to myself. It's not just something that's done in a spiritual sense but not recognized in the natural. It is to be evidenced in the natural. So the building blocks that we're talking about this morning is something that, as a, the things I just talked about, is, it includes all of that. Over in, in Proverbs 24, I'm just kind of jumping ahead for, a, well, it'll be several weeks, the Lord will, that we get there. I'm going to read to you the, the amplified Scripture given in Proverbs 24, verses 3 and 4. The Amplified Version says, Through skillful and godly wisdom is a house, and then in parentheses it says, a life, a home, a family, built. And by understanding, it is established. You see, so we're not only supposed to build, but it has to be established. There's a difference. A lot of people are just building, but they're, they're never established. That's right. That's right. It has to be established. And then after that, on, in parentheses, it says, on a sound and good foundation. It has to be established. Verse 4. And by knowledge, 
shall its chambers of every area be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Who, who else could give such goodness but only God? And God gave through His Son, through Jesus becoming the sacrifice that God had called Him to be, and He chose and He surrendered to that, and He gave His will over for the Father's will to be accomplished. That these great riches, these abundant and precious things are filled within the house that God is building, that is constructing for you and I. I'm not talking about the one awaiting for us in glory, but I'm talking about the here and now, about the today, about where we're at right now. And it's not just about, you know, the, the natural things that we look at in this life that we all have to, you know, we all have to be on guard that they don't take our, our attention, they don't steal our attention away and our devotion. Because God wants, and He is a blessing God, to bless with increase, to bless with good things in this life, to bless with more than enough. That's the kind of God we serve. Amen. But we never take our eyes off of Him unto the things that He has devoted, that He has provided, that our devotion stays unto Him. And He builds. And he blesses. And he fills those chambers. He fills those rooms of this building of our life. It says that the foolish one, or the foolish, in, in verse 1, back in 14, 1, it says, the foolish one tears it down with her hands. You know, we can be our own worst enemy, church. When it comes to this life as, and our life as a Christian here on this earth, we can be our own worst enemy. And that's why that we find ourselves and we keep ourselves in the correct position and the place that we're called to be in. I want to quickly go into the book of Ephesians. Chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, beginning in verse 1. Now y'all listen fast, I'm going to read fast, but this is important. Because I really felt this is the direction for this morning. He says, And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespass and sins, wherein in times past you walked according to the course of this world, According to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for in his great love wherewith he loved us. I'm talking about great love. Great love that only God could give. Even when he, even, I'm sorry, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace you are saved. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places. These, these next three words are very important. In Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith. 
I want to read that again. For by grace are you saved through faith. It's God's goodness and our faith that he's given us that we may be a, a participant of this wonderful program that he has initiated so many years ago. I want to be a participant. I don't want to just be a spectator. A lot of people are just fine and damn, they're happy being spectators because it doesn't cost much to be a spectator. But to be a participant, to participate, it says, and that is not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained, that we should walk in them. Walk in what? Good works. And God ordained it to be so, and he never ordains or calls or commands unless he gives what is required. He gives us the things that are, that are required for us to be what he's called us to be. I believe that with whatever, whatever it is that we would have a question about. Yes. Go with me real quick. Skip down to verse 18. For through him... It's through him we both have access. This is talking, of course, previous verses, Jew and Gentile. But it says that we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now, therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God and are built upon the foundation. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and are built upon the foundation of the prophets and are built upon Jesus Christ himself being the chief corner stone. This is the foundation that is to be built upon and none other. In whom? Meaning in Jesus Christ, in his provision, in his sacrifice, all the building. I, I want to be part of the building. In all the building, he says, in everything and every process and every part of it, all the building fitly framed together, it grows. It grows unto a holy temple. This is not just a building. You know, you may go down the street, you see land cleared off, and you see new dirt, and you see they've got the red dirt out there, and you see the foundation. What are they building out there? What are they going to build next? This is not just any building. And it says that are built unto a holy temple in the Lord. So that, that tells me that there is some accountability on my part to be sure that I'm on the right foundation and that I'm allowing this temple, this holy temple, to be built in the Lord. Not just a building, not just a fast food joint. Because you know the church is used to fast food. That's what most of the church is living off of is fast food. I'm not talking about in the natural either. I'm talking about spiritually speaking. Absolutely, that's right. Fast food. Yeah. It's good. It's got lots of salt. It's got lots of sugar in it. It's fast. It's good. Woo, that makes me feel good. But it ain't good. It ain't good. We all, we all, all want to eat a piece of the birthday cake, right? When it's our birthday, we want a piece of the cake. But you can't live off of it. You don't live off of that. You won't live healthy at all if that's all you, you focus on, if that's all you consume. The church, for the most part, has become unhealthy because of its diet. 
and the things that has been shoved in front of us to hear, hear, hear. And I understand, even the strongest and the best of the best of the disciplined Christian, if they don't make a move to remove themselves from that environment, they won't be able to stand either. Because that, if it's continually put there, if it's continually out there, and it's continually, well, this one's eating it, and that looks like it ain't affecting them too good. I mean, that, I mean, they don't have no problems. They're just happy. Everything's going good. They got a raise on their job. Their kids are doing good. Then, then we look at somebody else over here. He says, you know, from what I hear about them, they just got a new house. I mean, they, they was able to... And, and they came out really good. They sold their old house, got a new house, and boy, look at how it's going for them. Look at this one over here. And we start looking around and we see people, That's right. but we don't remember what the scripture says. God help us to remember yes. what the scripture says, what the scripture teaches Amen. of the wise and the foolish. Amen. I'm telling you, church, it may look good on the outside. It may appear to be something that, oh, I just, I just got to have that. But that, this chapter also says that there is a way that seems right to a man. Yes, that's right. But the end of that way is death. Things can appear, they can appear to be good, they can appear to be right, and exactly what I need. But this scripture right here, and I'm going to end with verse 22 before we go back in, in Ephesians. It says, again, it says, in whom? Before I got off the preaching, I got to get back to my scripture. It says, also in whom you also are builded together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. See? We've, for, you know, and, and it's true in a sense, but if we're not careful, we won't believe what this says. What I'm about to say. God lives in a house. But we've been taught that he don't. But he does. He wants to live in me. He wants, he, he wants my house. That's the house God wants to live in. And he does live. He does live there. He does live in your house. So God lives in a house, but it's not a house that's made with hands. It's a house that he created and designed and he built. And as we as being surrendered now into his plan, his building plan, his blueprints, Everything that, you know, we can just roll it all out on the table and look at it and says, okay, this has got to be that, that. Let's just, I'm going to surrender to what the architect says and let him have his way to build. Yeah. Let him have his way to build. Yes, amen. He's given us everything that we need contained in these, this book, this book right here, the Holy Bible. He's given it to us. To take from that and let these building blocks in life come and be placed and be put in the right order. Earlier when I said that our life should be a life of worship to God, I want you to just write down John 4, 23 and 24. Because that's when Jesus was speaking with a woman at the well and says that God is a spirit and that they who come to God must worship him in spirit and in truth. I think it's the verse before that. I, I'm just not for time. I'm going to say it. I'm going to go there and read it. But y'all read it. It says that the hour is and even shall come and even now is that they who worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. So I probably messed that all up, so y'all go read that. 
write that down and go read that and see how that can affect me. In 1 Corinthians, again, we're looking at, and I believe that this is something the Lord showed me, in 1 Corinthians, the building blocks that we as a wise child of God, that we take these building blocks and apply them, but it's only because, it's only through the one that's provided. It's only through the one that's provided this. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, beginning in verse 30. But of him are you in Christ Jesus, who of God has made unto us wisdom, who has made unto, who is, who? Christ Jesus. He has made unto us wisdom. He has made unto us, he says, righteousness. He has made unto us sanctification. And he has made unto us redemption. These, these things right here, I want you to look at just for a moment and the order that they were placed in. I don't, I don't want to take anything out of context. That's not my heart. That's not my intention. But I believe there is a, a purpose seen in Scripture of how things are given to us. And the first word that is given is wisdom. That I want, I got to reread this because I want, I want you to grab this. It says. But of him are you in Christ Jesus. You've got to be in Christ Jesus. But it's of him that we're in him. We can't, we couldn't just, we couldn't even just come to him on our own. I mean, think about how powerful this is for us. That when we grab a hold to what God wants to do in my life, he wants to change me. He wants me to reflect him in this world that we're living in. He has made unto us wisdom. The next one is righteousness, as I said before. These are not light words. Wisdom, righteousness, sanctification. Where is that today in the modern church? But let's talk about redemption. That's why that we can't go around telling everybody that, hey, if you receive Christ, then it don't matter no more what you do. You go on to heaven. I'm sorry, but that's the scripture does not teach that. It's a damnable doctrine that sends people to hell because they think that because they joined the church at whatever point in their life, but they never gave their heart and life to Jesus. They think everything's okay. They think that, that whenever I do stand before him, that he's going to pull that roll up from whatever church that is and say, oh, okay, there, there you are. Okay, well, come on. Enter on into the joy of the Lord. I don't, I don't, I can't preach that. I can't teach that. That's why that redemption, redemption is the prize, church. Right, we have got to be redeemed. We have got to be redeemed. Every part about our life has got to point to that redemption. It's not about what all we can grab here while we're here. 
I, I talked about that a little bit earlier. It doesn't matter about things so much. It's, it's good to have them, it's, but, but they're not to have you. Redemption is the prize. Redemption is what we have to stay focused on. I'm not, and neither am I saying that if you, that you walk around on eggshells and you, and you step on a crack and you do something wrong, I'm not saying that, that you lose redemption. I'm not saying that. But it's how you build. It's the building plan that you follow. Every wise woman builds her house, but the foolish church, to be called a fool, is a is a terrible thing okay but there are a lot of fools on earth there are a lot of fools on earth because they have they are they're looking to serving god in their own way and the scripture i, I gotta read this and i go back to proverbs for my time's up okay verse 31 it says that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. So if we're using the correct building blocks and we see the order that God wants them in our life, then we're not to boast and brag and, and that, that all flesh tries to glory in his presence, but the scripture says that no flesh should glory in his presence in verse 29. No flesh. It says, him that glory, let him glory in the Lord. Now go with me back real quick to 14. In verse number 9. In verse number 9. I, I kind of covered from 1 through 12. Uh, Sister Carolyn, if whatever the, which way the Lord will lead and guide you for next time that we, that we meet. It says that fools make a mock at sin. But among the righteous, there is favor. I didn't bring it with me, but I wrote it down, I think. I don't know I did. No, I didn't. But in the Amplified Version, it brings out the very fact of the sin offering that fools mock at trying to present their own sin offering. That's, that's the idea that's, that's given in this scripture. The mockery that's made of sin it, at the same hand mocks the answer to sin. Think about what I'm saying. Do you realize, and I've got to quit, the people that mock you and mock me and mock every other child of God that takes time from their life to do Instead of doing some, some other worldly pleasure to come to church. It ain't popular to go to church. It, Sister Francis has taught it and preached it many times. It used to be everybody went to church because you couldn't go nowhere else. Doesn't necessarily mean everybody was okay, but everybody went to church. Fools, it says. Fools. There was cars that were horses and buggies or people, a lot of people walked. They got to church. So church, I, I, I just wanted to bring out these points to you that it's important. It's important not to be foolish. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it, I realize we mess up sometimes. We do things we wish that hadn't have done, but it all goes back to the foundation that we're standing on, we're building on, we're trusting in. Jesus Christ, his blood, his provision, his life, death, burial, and resurrection. Amen. Because he alone is the perfect Amen. Lamb of God. Thank you so much. Amen. And I, I hope you got something this morning that will just be a blessing to you. Amen. On and on and on. Amen. Amen. Right, thank you. Amen.